Um, thank you so much for joining us. It's, uh, it's been a while that we've done a webinar on a flower variety. Um, and because peony season is just around the corner, we thought it would be a good idea to have Emma tell you everything about peonies. So Flora Life has done quite a lot of research on peonies um, and she thought it'd be great to share her findings, our findings with you so that you can prep better for the season. Um, as I mentioned, Emma's our presenter. She's Flora Life's technical support representative. She's also our walking plant and flower encyclopedia. She's the one we go to for expert information on flowers. Um, and she's gonna be the one who's going to be informing you on peonies. And at the end, she will answer any questions you have. So during her presentation, if a question pops up in your head or something's unclear, use the chat function on your screen and send us your questions. And at the end, uh, we'll take a few minutes to answer your questions live. And if we don't get to them live, we'll make sure that we reach out to you personally to get you the answer you're looking for. Just a quick side note, uh, the webinar is being recorded and you will be able to find it later on on our YouTube channel. So don't worry if, you, if you've missed a few things during the presentation. Emma, please take it away. Thank you, Georgina. Well, hello and welcome to this Peony webinar. Now, as Georgina just mentioned, uh, my name is Emma Bradford, and today I will be presenting information on peonies from what they are, where and when they grow, how to care for them properly, and finally, how to identify problematic browning. So what are peonies? Well, after roses, they are the most popular seasonal cut flower on the market. And it's not hard to understand why. They are truly gorgeous. But let's go over the fundamentals first. Now, bear with me. Next bit is going to be to satisfy the botany geeks among you. So here goes. So peonies are in the plant family Peoniaceae, which consists of only one genus. That's Peonia. Um, and according to the plant list, there are 36 scientifically accepted species. But of these 36, Peonia lactiflora is the most widely grown as a cut flower. Now, even though only one species of peony is grown as a cut flower, there are many different varieties or cultivars uh, within that species that have been developed by plant breeders. And these varieties vary in color, flower shape, and bloom time. So before I go on, just in case you're still not sure on the difference between a species and a variety, I'll use dogs as an example. So as you may know, all domesticated dogs are the same species. And that's Canis lupus familiaris, or also just Canis familiaris. But within that species, there are many different breeds, which is just another way of saying variety or cultivar. And peonies work the same way. So the species is Peona, Peon, sorry, Peonia lactiflora, but within that species, there are many different varieties. So peonies are native to Asia, Europe, North Africa, and Western North America. Uh, that means that there are species in those areas that grow in the wild. Now, legend has it that the peony is named after Peon, who was a student of Asclepius, the Greek god of medicine and healing. So apparently, in Greek mythology, when Asclepius became jealous of his pupil, Zeus saved Peon from the wrath of Asclepius by turning him into a peony flower. And peonies also feature prominently in Eastern culture, and they are, in fact, the national flower of China. And they've been cultivated in China from at least the 5th century, primarily for food and medicine. So let's have a look at how peonies grow. Now, the first thing to know is that peonies are a perennial plant. Now, that just means that they grow back year after year. In fact, peony plants have been known to live up to 100 years. Also, peony plants produce only one flower crop per season. So once the flowers have been harvested, 
they don't reflower again. And amazingly, there are at least 6,500 different peony varieties. But within that, Sarah Bernhardt remains the firm favorite and the most widely grown. And this variety was first released back in 1908, making it 104 years old this year. So although pale pink is the most widely grown color of peony, there are varieties that are available in shades of red, white, coral, yellow, and purple, and a mixture of all of those. There are bicolor ones as well. So not only do they come in a wide variety of colors, but they also are available in six different flower shapes. And the six different shapes are anemone, but be careful, that's not to be confused with the anemone flower. The anemone flower is a completely different crop. It's just this peony form is so called because it, resembly, it closely resembles an anemone flower. Then there's balm, which looks similar to a carnation. Full double, single, Japanese, and finally semi-double. And in case you're wondering, just for reference, the beloved Sarah Bernhardt is classed as a dub full double flower. So let's get to the nitty gritty. What should you look for when buying peonies? Well, first off, peonies are always best bought in bud. This ensures that you get the longest possible shelf life. And to identify the best buds, very gently squeeze each bud to test their hardness. The ideal bud is a texture of a marshmallow. And this means that the flowers inside are fully developed and ready to open. Avoid any buds which are hard like marbles because these will likely struggle to fully open. Now remember, please don't be put off by how peonies look in bud because let's be honest, they can be a bit of an ugly duckling. And that's because the peony flowers are surrounded by tough sepals, which protect the delicate petals until it's time for them to open. So you can think of these sepals as the bodyguards. They take the knocks so that the petals don't have to. And as a result, they don't always look pretty. So some small blemishes or discoloration on the green sepals are perfectly natural. However, having said that, any buds that have black or dark brown patches should be avoided because this could be a sign of disease and could negatively affect the vase life of your peony. And once purchased, the care and handling of peonies is as just for any other flower. You should always store your peonies in the chiller at one to three degrees Celsius, uh, that's 34 to 38 Fahrenheit. Also very important, even if your chiller is set to this temperature, you should always verify that the actual temperature inside your chiller, with a check it with a reliable thermometer, just to verify that it really is one to three degrees C, or like I said, 34 to 38 Fahrenheit. Now the relative humidity inside your chiller should be 75 to 85%. And this is because if the humidity drops below 75, you could run the risk that your flowers could dehydrate. And if it rises above 85%, then you could run the risk that your flowers could develop botrytis. Now there is one thing that is a little bit different from most flowers with peonies. And that is that they can be stored wet or dry. They do very well stored dry in the chiller at those temperatures. But if you do choose to place your peonies in water, always start with a clean bucket or vase and use correctly mixed flower food with fresh water. So, and for those of you who do use a water softener, remember never to ever use softened water with cut flowers. Given all that, on average, the vase life of peonies range from about five to eight days. 
It depends on the variety, uh, how the stems were grown and how they were handled after harvest. So even though peonies are a seasonal flower, by growing them in different regions worldwide, it's actually possible to source peonies there all year round. Here you can see when and where peonies are grown to extend the season for as long as possible. I just want to point out that in the US, it has a very long growing season and it's extended over such a long time thanks to the large geographic region uh, the geographic spread of the growing region in the US, which extends up north to Alaska. Now, on top of that, growers worldwide also extend the availability of peonies by storing them and growing varieties which mature at different times. Now, as you can see on the picture, peonies are typically grown in open fields. But some growers are able to advance the season by growing peonies in open-ended polytunnels. Now this just creates a warmer microwave climate which tricks the peonies into blooming sooner. Also worth noting, in our testing, we've observed that the flower quality is more consistent earlier in the season of any growing region uh, before the field temperatures get too warm. Now, as I said earlier, many growers opt to store their peonies for several weeks to extend their season. The best way to store them is dry and in cold temperature. In fact, the latest research from North Carolina State University demonstrated that with the cultivars Festiva Maxima, Monsieur Jules Eli, and Sarah Bernhardt, they can all be stored up to 12 weeks at 0 0.7 degrees C, that's 33 degrees Fahrenheit, and up to 14 weeks at minus 0 0.6 degrees C, which is 31 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this is with the caveat that increased storage duration uh, increases the risk of reduced flower quality. So the longer that you store them for, there is a higher risk that your flower quality might decrease. The other crucial factor to successfully storing peonies is to ensure that the chiller that you use can remain at those low temperatures without any fluctuation and for long periods. So because of that, it's not recommended that you use a working chiller. In other words, a chiller that is accessed, people going in and out of it constantly is not recommended to use for long-term storage because you just can't maintain that temperature without fluctuation. Now, as much as we absolutely love peonies, they can sometimes display one characteristic that is the bane of technical managers everywhere, and that is petal browning. But don't worry. I'm here to talk you through the three different types of petal browning in peonies and how to identify them. So the first type, and it's probably the most widespread, and that is just natural petal browning. Now this type of petal browning is easy to recognize as the petals turn a pale brown or light tan color usually in a uniform pattern all the way around the flower bud. It's not concentrated on any one side. And this type of browning shows up first on the outer petals. Good news is it's usually hidden by the inner petals once the flower fully opens. So you don't usually notice it once the flowers open, but occasionally it can spread throughout the plant towards the center, towards the end of the vase life. Now this type of browning is not caused by any disease. It is just due to the natural senescence of the flower. Fortunately, to date, there is no definitive answer as to why this happens or how we can prevent it. Second type of flower browning is caused by a disease called alternaria. 
And this one is identified by the, its very dark brown stains that develop on the outer petals. Now these stains are typically about the size of a 10 pence piece or a quarter, and they don't grow larger over time. They stay the same size throughout the whole vase life. Now, Altenaria is typically a disease found on leaves. So how does a leaf disease get on flower buds? Well, we have a hypothesis that we think explains it. So peony flowers have nectaries that secrete a sweet sugary nectar on the outside of the buds. And this happens while the flowers are still growing outside in the fields. Now this sweet offering attracts ants. So ants walk up the plants to the flower buds to drink the nectar. So it's highly likely that ants walking over diseased leaves then track alternaria spores up to the buds, thus infecting the flowers as they, the flowers that they visit. If you see this type of browning on your peonies, you will likely see diseased leaves as well. Um, the good news is, once again, is that once the flowers are open, the, flower, the brown spots are hidden by the inner petals, so they aren't that noticeable. Now this type of browning can only be prevented by controlling it pre-harvest. And lastly, the third type of browning is more rare, but it is devastating when it happens. And that's browning due to botrytis. Now this type of browning is identified as a dark brown stain again, usually near the base of the flower. And from there, it progresses quickly throughout the whole base of the flower, rotting the whole flower from the bottom. So this is a case where the brown spot will grow and spread. It won't just stay localized to that small section. It will just completely devastate that flower. Now, if you find botrytis in your peonies, remove the infected stems immediately to prevent it spreading to any healthy, healthy stems. And the way to control it is by practicing good hygiene, maintaining the cool chain, which can all help reduce the risk of botrytis. But it's as with Altenaria, this type of browning can only be prevented by controlling it pre-harvest. And on that note, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. And I'll ask you to please welcome my colleague, Gary Lignani, who will be joining me in answering any questions that you may have. Thank you, Emma. We have a few questions that have come in. Oh, let me get my... oh. One of the questions that came in is, what's the recommended hydration time using flower food? Ah. Um, I would say at least 24 hours, so hydration 24 hours in the chiller, that is, uh, before using them in any type of arrangement. So although peonies are, do very well store dry, they do need that 24 hours of, of hydration before being placed into any type of arrangement or uh, being sent to the consumer's home, for instance. So you, you mentioned that there are three different types of brownings. Um, do these brownings on the flowers reduce the base life of these flowers? The, yes, in some of them cases they do. The alternaria, not so much because it doesn't really progress that well. Um, it stays localized. The thing about alternaria is that, like I said, it's a leaf disease and it, if it finds itself on the flower bud, it will try to do its thing, but it's really happiest on the leaf. So it will progress a lot quicker on the leaf than it will on the flower. Um, the natural browning, the natural senescence, that is something that can develop quite quickly and unexpectedly during Vars life. Um, it tends to be towards the later part, usually. So you usually guarantee at least the five days um, but you may not get much more than that. With the botrytis, that will, it, as, as in botrytis and roses, it does exactly the same thing. Once it starts progressing, it will just devastate that flower. 
And the reason it, it attacks where it does on a peony plant is again because of those nectaries. So all of that sugary, all that food, all that good stuff is in the base of that flower. So the botrytis will just go like wildfire through the base of that flower and it will just, it won't, the flower will not do well in vase life. Then there's another question about the opening. So why mm -hmm. do some varieties open very quickly and some almost don't open at all? And does it have something to do with the variety or is it the cut stage? Yeah, it is, it is all of those things. So there is a difference in opening in, in variety. There's a difference in opening in cut stage. Cut stage can be quite tricky to get right, I would say. Um, the thing about peonies is that because they're seasonal, you will find if there is a warm day that your flowers will, the, in the field will progress very quickly. So sometimes the growers will have to, or they'll have their core workers, which know the peonies very well and know the correct harvest stage. But when you have a very warm day and you have to crop a lot of flowers in a very short space of time, uh, if you get agency workers or, or part-time workers who don't really know the flowers, then you run the risk that they may not cut them at the correct cut stage, basically. And it is all done by feel. So just like I said, when you're buying your stems, give those buds a gentle squeeze to see how they are. When you harvest them, it's the same thing. That's how they're judging uh, whether a stem is ready to harvest or not. It's the how hard or soft that bud is, basically. So definitely know your growers, uh, get to know your growers if you can, uh, and where they come, where your peonies come from. And also you may be able to see which ones are better judging cut stage, basically, which ones do it consistently well. Um, weather can also play a part in that. But I would say the largest thing about not opening is cut stage. Um, opening too quickly uh, can also be with poor temperature regime. So if your peonies are kept too warm, they will open and develop a lot quicker than if they're kept uh, at one to three degrees C. Okay, thanks for that one. Um, how can we encourage the buds to bloom without making them look tired? So, for example, what happens if peonies arrive later than expected and you need them in a blooming bouquet? Ah, uh, okay. It's it's a bit of a, a tricky one, especially for florists. I would say try and as much plan ahead. I mean, it's not always possible because hiccups do happen. Um, but the best way is to use a flower food and to place your flowers in ambient. So I wouldn't recommend manipulating them too much. Um, just let them open and develop on their own. If you're very careful and you really are stretched and you really need them for an event, you may be able to very gently manipulate the, the petals open a little bit, um, but really leaving them to develop on their own and open on their own is the best way. Um, if you have a choice and you're able to choose the flowers that you buy, do that bud test. Like I said, the softer the bud, the closer it is to opening. So if you can, if you're pressed for time and you have to buy them today for an event for tomorrow or in two days, then buy the softest buds that you can find because those are the ones that will tend to open the quickest. Mm -hmm. um, see if you know this one. Should ants be controlled to prevent alternaria tracking? Hey. <laughs> I mean, hmm. it's... it's yeah, it's a tricky one because that just gets into a lot of a lot of debate. So organic, non-organic, things like that. Um, I think it is down to. I mean, it is one of the ways that we can control it. Possibly um, the other way is field hygiene. So alternaria, it will it will be in that field, and because it's a perennial crop, um, the disease that you have this year could infect your crop next year as well. So I would start with good hygiene in the field. So removing all the, the debris, all of the old leaves and things like that from your field to remove all of that disease and all those disease spores. 
from your field and start with that uh, and maybe treating for the alternaria rather than treating for the ants. But that is down to the grower, ultimately. Yeah. Um, some of the peony, when received, they have those, those brown petals. But when mm -hmm. opening, you hardly see them. You see you hardly see those spots on them. Yeah. Um, so they open nicely. They don't have the brown spots, but on others, you do see the brown spots. How do you differentiate beforehand which ones are fine to use and which aren't? Yeah, it's hard, especially for the natural browning. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've talked to growers and there is some anecdotal, well, we think anecdotal evidence or we think that weather is... Uh, associated with the natural browning so warm weather dry weather cold weather frost all sorts and <laughs> if you talk to a grower they'll have a theory for all of it um, it's really not easy to predict when and which stems it will happen on and from my experience over the last 10 years with peonies it also varies year to year and variety to variety so on some years, at least here in the UK, we see a lot of browning on Sarah Bernhardt. And then the next year, Sarah Bernhardt will be fine. And it will be a, a different variety, a white variety, for instance, that we'll see the browning on. So it's really hard to predict, is all I can say, except for the diseased ones, which are very dark, which you can see the natural petal browning, the, the pale brown one, it's hard mm -hmm. to predict. Yep. Okay. Um, so for pickers, when pickers um, check the ripeness of the buds, you know, by squeezing them, are they not going to cause mm -hmm. mechanical injuries to the flowers? No, it's a very gentle squeeze. So you don't have to squeeze it very hard. You're not pressing down very hard. You're just giving it a very gentle squeeze just yeah. to sort of test the firmness. You don't, yeah, you don't want to, to squeeze too hard. It's very easy when, if you do press them gently to, to determine whether it is too too green or mm -hmm. it's right for harvest, basically. Okay. Yeah, it's I a hard one to describe in words. You have to sort of, you know, it's very tactile. So you have to sort of get in there and do it. And then once you've got the, see how, how which the good ones are, then you're sort of on your way. Yeah. Okay. Are peonies ethylene sensitive? Now, from the tests that we've done, I would say no. I know there is literature that says using an anti-ethylene treatment like um, Ethelgard, for instance, when it has an STS, so a silver thiosulfate in it, does prolong the vase life of peonies. Whether that is because it is a preventing ethylene damage or having some other mode of action on it, I couldn't tell. But in my mind, I would say in general, the peonies are not ethylene sensitive. Hey Emma, can I add something to that? Yeah, please, Gary. Hey, no. Gary. <laughs> yeah, um, ethylene sensitivity on peonies is, um, there's not a, a lot of agreement on the topic, but when you consider there's 6,500 varieties. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there are some varieties that may be more sensitive than others. Um, sometimes in our testing, we'll see some petal drop or shattering, and that could be due to ethylene. But um, right now, there's really no academic studies that I've seen um, that clearly show ethylene sensitivity. But I still wouldn't rule it out. I think we don't know. Thanks for that. For everyone who doesn't know who Gary Lignani is, he is our um, horticultural research and development manager. So he and Emma are both um, very well um, researched in peonies and, and everything surrounding that and other types of flowers as well. So thank you for, for joining us, Gary. Um, yeah, sure, thank you. I have a few more questions. Um, are peonies dangerous to other flowers when mixed in a vase? Um, not that I have ever, not that I know of, not that I've ever observed. 
So there are some that you wouldn't recommend to mix in. So and there are some flowers like um, narcissus, daffodils, things like that, where you definitely don't recommend having them in a mixed bouquet because they will negatively affect the vase life of other flowers. But for peonies, I haven't observed that and they actually work really well with, in a mixed bouquet because they have that big fluffy heads that are gorgeous. Mixing them with other things really just brings out their beauty. So I think they're perfect for um, mixing in mixed bouquets. Okay. And do you think they're a good flower to use for special events like weddings, for example? Yes, yeah, yeah, they're very popular for weddings because they have that lovely romantic fluffy feel and you can get so many different varieties. So you've got the pale pink, Sarah Bernhardt, but then you've got some beautiful white ones, coral, oh, the coral charm. I'm oh, sorry, I'm going off because I love the coral, the coral ones especially because they start out with a really beautiful, bright coral color. And then during the vase life, it fades to a lovely cream. So they actually change yeah. color over the vase life, which I really love. So yeah, for whatever bride, whatever color scheme you want, I'm sure you will find a peony which will fit into that scheme. Okay. How long on average does a peony take to open once in a vase? It, it depends on the cut stage. So it will depend, it, well, it depends on the variety first off. It depends on how it's grown, where it's grown, what the weather is like at the time of harvest. There's so many variables. So you can't say specifically for this variety, it's going to open in this amount of days because it varies widely. Um, I mean, usually the flowers mm -hmm. here are sold in bud. So I'm saying here, I mean, in the supermarket. So you'll get peony bouquets, which have like five or six peonies in a, in a bunch. And they are all sold in bud. And usually within two or three days of bringing them home in warm, giving them flower food, they do start to open and develop. But it is really down to variety cut stage, weather at harvest. So there's a lot of variation. Just do the little bud test. The softer mm -hmm. the bud, the quicker it will open, basically. Yeah, that's a good, good test. Yeah. Um, I've heard of wrapping and preserving peony buds in the refrigerator to store and use later when they are no longer readily available. Any thoughts on this? Well, that is similar to what the growers will do or the um, suppliers will do. And so storing them dry, I'm not sure about wrapping because you might run the risk of botrytis if you trap in a lot of humidity in there. Mm -hmm. But yes, peonies do store very well dry in the chiller. Again, I'd go back to what I said. It has to be one to three degrees um, and it has to be constant. So no fluctuations and for the, the amount of time that you want to store them for. Like I said, they can be stored up to 12, 14 weeks, depending on the temperature, depending on the cultivar. The longer you store them, the higher the risk that your flower quality will decrease. So mm -hmm. you can store them, but you definitely have to maintain that cold temperature. Yeah. Can yeah, you, you want dry? To add oh, sorry. Did you want to add a bit to that, Gary? Yeah, Emma, I, I think that um, it's it's amazing how tough these flowers are. Um, we've had peonies we've gotten near the end of the season that we know have been stored by the grower for a long time. And they can arrive looking really sad. And um, you'd think that they're never going to recover. But within a couple of days, they fully recover and bloom. So I don't think you should have any hesitation in storing them dry. Um, it is important, I think, that they have been hydrated um, for some period of time before going into dry storage. Some growers um, will only do this maybe for two hours to four hours. Um, they don't want to overhydrate them and promote the opening. Um, but I think if you can maintain the cold temperatures, that dry storage is the best way to go. Definitely better than wet storage. Thank you. 
One question we have about dry arrangements. So can you dry peonies for dry arrangements? That's a good question. I've never tried it. I know there are commercial companies which will professionally sort of freeze dry flowers, whether this is one of the ones that they do. I've only seen it mostly done on roses. Um, so I'll have to defer the question unless Gary knows. I, I don't, yeah, that is not my speciality. Drying flowers is not my speciality. No. So I would hate to say yes and then I'll have them not work. Gary, do you have any experience with um, dried peonies? Oh, sorry, no, I don't. Um, maybe there are some listeners out there that, that might have some experience with it that can chime in, but ah, that's um, a good one. Yeah. I don't know anything about that. Yeah. yeah if anyone uh, listening has dried peonies in the past and um, knows what the results are like, share it in the chat. We'd like to hear from you. Um, are peonies sensitive to high levels of sugar in dehydration solutions? Well, I would, I would question what high levels of sugars m refers to. Uh, I know all of our flower foods, they are um, formulated to deliver what the flower needs at that particular time. So whether it's hydration solution for, at the grower or storage solution at the supermarket or florist or wholesaler or the consumer food, the consumer sachet, each one has a correct amount of sugars and other things in there to treat the flowers for that period of time, what they need. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you're using a, a flower food uh, and it's correctly dosed, then you don't need to worry about it. Okay, yeah. Is sea shipment possible for peonies? Ooh, good question. I'm not familiar with sea freight. Um, most of our peonies that I've seen, if we get them, well, if our, I'd say for the UK market, if they are sourced, they're usually air freighted in. Gary, do you know of sea freighted peonies? No, I'm not familiar that that's being done, um, but I would think as tolerable as they are to dry storage that that could be done. Um, perhaps it's because of the short season that it's, it's not common because sea freight can take, you know, four to six weeks. So I'm guessing because the seasons are so limited in different parts of the world that um, air freight is probably the only option. Yeah, and you would need a lot of peonies in a very short amount of time to fill a container. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If anyone has any questions, it's the time to send them because I've gone through everything we've received. Um, I'm just going to. No, I think we've we've answered all the questions. Um, if anyone, if a question pops up um, after the webinar and you're like, oh darn, I forgot to ask it, here is a marketing at floralife.com email address. Email us, let us know what questions you have, or if there's a specific topic that you would like us to do a next webinar on, um, we'll make sure that you get answers to your questions and that we look into the topics you're interested in. I'll thank you, Emma, so much for your presentation and for answering questions. And thank Gary, you. thank you for hopping on the call and helping us as well with, the, with some of the questions. Um, everyone listening, thank you for joining us. And we really look forward to having you next time. Keep an eye out for our social media. We post um, regularly when we're going to have another webinar, what the topic is, and so you can schedule that in your calendar to make sure you can join us. If you're interested in any of the other webinars that we've done in the past, you can always head over to our YouTube channel. I'll post it in the chat. And there you can see Emma presenting away um, some other flower varieties that she's discussed or any uh, sustainability topics that we've discussed in the past, just head over there. You can find some, some good videos with con good content. So thank you, Emma. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, audience. And we look forward to talking to you guys next time. Bye. Bye-bye.